Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the insides of two of the top performing radio controlled car motors in the industry. The first motor that we're gonna to use to compare, you've seen this multiple times on the channel already, is the Castle 1721 2400 kV motor. This is very well known in the Castle lineup for being the solution and answer to straight line racing. The other motor that we're gonna be comparing this against when we pull them all apart is the 4070 CM series 2200 kV TP power motor. Both of these motors are very well known for their high speed, high RPM operation. And both of them are also very well known for pulling a significant amount of power. One thing I do want to point out about the TP power motor is that they have three different versions that I'm aware of for the 4070 class. One is your standard 4070 motor. The other one is a 4070 CM series motor, which is what this one is. And the other one is a 4070 SCM version. Now the 4070 motor is not capable of the extreme high RPM that the CM version is capable of. And the SCM goes above and beyond that, allowing even further RPM output of your brushless motor. Now the way or reason I specifically selected the CM version is because on their data sheet, this puts out the most amount of power. Just because we have access to more RPM does not necessarily mean that we're gonna get more power out from the motor. There's a lot more that works into that equation. So that's the reason why we have specifically selected this version for our comparison against the Castle motor. Now the way I'm going to do this is quite simple. I'm gonna pull the fasteners off the front of this motor so that we can remove the rotor and see exactly what the difference is internal to the motors are. So let's go ahead, pull those covers off and take a look at all of the different parts. All right, here are all the parts scattered on the table. We're gonna go through about seven areas of conversation with all these parts. And we're gonna start right at the very most basic and that is the fasteners that help hold our end cap to the body of the motor. Castle utilizes three of these fasteners whereas TP Motor utilizes four of these fasteners to secure their cap to the body of the motor. Now what's really interesting about the caps themselves is the feature that is utilized to help center up the cap, which is then gonna be the actual shaft of the motor to the body of the motor. I like this feature, how it goes right inside the motor. Now, the only other way that you'd be able to center this up if you did not have this feature here on the end cap is by utilizing the screws. The screws fasten the cap into the motor and that would be the other means of actually centering up the shaft. I much prefer this feature centering up the shaft. I think it makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to deal with and that's why I like it a lot. Now Castle, they use the exact same design where they have this feature on the end cap that helps center itself up with the actual motor. So this is something I definitely love. When it comes to the actual designs of the cap, they both have their own unique design and how they chamfer certain areas of the cap, have cutouts for the fasteners that are going to be utilized to secure the cap to the body of the motor, and they have some other features that allow us to see some sort of uniqueness to the motor. Now one may argue that, you know, something like this, not very important, but it's interesting because someone actually had to think about this, design it, and make it turn out in this way for whatever reason and goals they're trying to achieve. So let's go and move on to the more core of the motor. This is the rotor for the Castle Creations brushless motor, and that is the rotor for the TP motor. Now I do have to obviously keep these separated at a distance because if I were to bring them close, they would smash into each other, I'm sure, at a significant amount of force, and I don't wanna see what that would look like. So the rotor here, you can see the size difference between the two. So just looking at the TP motor, its length is 72 millimeters long and the Castle rotor is 55 millimeters long and that's utilizing the distance between the ends of the sleeve. So you would think that because the Castle motor is so much smaller that it doesn't have the same amount of surface area that's gonna interact with the rotor and the stator when it comes to the magnetic field. 
And although there is a difference of 31% in the length of this motor versus the length of this motor, there's only a 8.5% difference between the actual surface area of this motor and this one, with the TP power motor being a little bit larger in surface area. Now another thing that I do want to point out is I did go and measure the actual strength of the magnetic force that I'm seeing on our castle motor versus the TP motor. Although I didn't use an exact science to go and measure this, I was consistently getting a difference of more than 5% stronger magnetic force from the castle motor than our TP motor. Now a couple things to go over about the rotor. So we know we have this stainless steel sleeve on both of these motors. Typically what you would see, and I'm gonna bring in a motor here and slide it in around the back of these ones, is a motor that has the magnets. This is kind of what it looks like. You have the core of the rotor and then magnets get placed in the proper locations. All of these are four pole motors. And then what you have on a conventional motor is Kevlar wrap that goes around this motor in order to help hold these magnets on. Now when it comes to our motors here, we have a stainless steel sleeve that is placed on them, allowing them to spin up to some significant RPM values. It's really cool also to look at the motor rotor here, see the etching in there for TP power, the website, and then some markings at the rear. So I'd imagine, I don't know for sure what these markings are for. I would expect that all these numbers could be related to balancing the rotor. So I'm gonna move this motor over here. I'm gonna rotate the shaft and show you how it looks that TP power is balancing the rotor. If we look at these markings, it does look like they balance the rotor out by just drilling into the caps that help support the magnets that are on this rotor. So on both sides, there's a different pattern, and I'm assuming that this is what they do in order to help balance the rotor after running it through some sort of test. Now, if we look at how the castle motor is balanced, it seems to use some sort of epoxy in the areas that is required. So there you can see on the front of the rotor, now rotating it around, making sure that nothing snaps into it, you can see there the epoxy that helps balance that rotor. And there you can see the sensors located right at the back of the castle motor. The TP motor does not have any sensors located at the rear of this rotor. And we know that this motor is a sensorless design. So this is definitely something I do prefer when it comes to the motor, it being censored is going to help the acceleration right from zero speed. And there's a good size comparison of our motors where you can see a massive difference between our radio control car motors versus this 12S high performance electric ducted fan motor. This thing pulls a significant amount of power and it looks like child's play in front of these radio control car motors. So here we can see the castle motor. It's got its typical green design. It's got the fins here on the side to help a little bit with cooling, but ultimately to give it that unique look. Now, if we do look at the inside of our motor, we can see obviously the windings there, but we can see this sort of sleeve at the very front of the motor. Now that sleeve is to make sure that the fasteners inside the cap going through these sort of areas do not go and destroy the windings of our motor. So love to see that component being used. And we got the TP motor with a nice smooth can, nothing fancy going on here, but it does have that same sort of sleeve at the very front of the motor protecting the windings of our motor. So love to see that component being used there. It helps make sure that we don't destroy it when putting the fasteners through the cap of the motor and into our motor. And the last thing to point your attention to is the wires located on each one of these motors. Castle Creations uses their famous, very flexible wiring. And this one here is an eight gauge, I'm sure it says here somewhere, we'll find it, there it is, eight gauge wire used on this motor. So that's quite beefy. And you get some eight millimeter bullets soldered already onto your wires. Now the TP motor, I'm gonna move that over here. This utilizes what looks to be very similar in gauge. I don't know if it actually states the gauge there, not quite, so we don't know exactly what gauge it is, but it does look like it is somewhere around eight gauge as well, except you don't have that flexible wire. You have the stiff wire that requires you to solder on some bullet connectors. So 
no big deal. Everyone working with these types of motors in the hobby can probably solder a good amount of connectors onto these motors with no issue at all. Well guys, that pretty well covers it for this video. I hope you got an interesting perspective as to exactly what's on the inside of these high performance brushless motors for radio controlled cars. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.